Welcome back to the Cheap Heat Productions podcast. Okay, welcome back to the show, and I have a special guest on the show today, Miss Brittany Cade. How are you doing today, Brittany? I'm so good. How are you? Yeah, very good. Thanks a million for joining me today on the show, firstly. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. <laughs> no problem at all. Um, look, I suppose we'll start off for people that may not know you. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm feel like most people would know me from my adult work. Um, but I've also been a model since I was like 16. So I did gain a small following through that. So, um, but I mainly do just porn and OnlyFans. <laughs> OnlyFans, it's such a massive thing these days. And there's so many varieties of different people on it. Like, how do you target your audience for that like oh um it's kind of funny i feel like it's not really hard for me to like find my audience because my audience kind of finds me <laughs> um they know what they want and if it's anything trans related i mean hello i can provide that <laughs> definitely yeah saying about the the trans porn like is it a lot more le a lot less taboo than it was we'll say 15 to 20 years ago um i would say that trans porn definitely has changed than it was um 10 15 years ago i can't really speak for how it was to the girls because i am a newcomer um I'm just wrapping up on my first year in porn, so, um, but entering it in this day and age is definitely, um, I feel like, I don't want to say easier, but uh, it's way easier for sure, and um, I feel like you're more appreciated and looked at as, um, I don't know, not just like a small niche um type of performer you're kind of like especially with the mainstream porn companies they're definitely taking a closer look at us and are featuring us a lot more which is so awesome and i think it's huge progress in the community definitely yeah and for yourself then uh people might be interested to know and i'm sure they will be about how your transition came about and that moment in your life and when you knew and things like that. Yeah, so um, I transitioned when I was super, super young. Um, it was like the youngest case my doctor had ever like treated, um, but I had known that I was trans since I was literally, I wanna say like maybe five or six years old. Um, I just always identified with the femininity and um, like girl toys, Barbie, I was obsessed with. Um, and I would get like crushes on guys and stuff and um, just things like that. And uh, growing up, you're definitely you feel different from everyone else because it's like, okay, like 
I feel like a girl, but that's not like what my body is. And it's definitely a big adjustment, but I had a super um, supportive mother. So she was like, okay, like, if you're feeling this way then you need to prove it to me and like get your ass on hormones and so that's what i did because I, I think it was also like proving my whole family that i was serious about this and it wasn't like a phase or anything like once you get on hormones too like your body like it's physically changed forever and um i'm so glad <laughs> that i definitely got on them when I was so young, like 13, um, because it's really influenced the rest of my life for sure. Yeah. Was it, looking back on that, was it the most difficult decision or the most easiest decision you think you've ever made? Um, <laughs> I definitely think that it was probably one of the easiest, but it was difficult for me to like come to terms with myself like i've done and been through so much in in my life and honestly the hardest thing not even having to deal with like other people is having to deal with um myself and like loving myself completely that was like so hard for me yeah. um because especially the outside world like it it really made me like hate myself genuinely. And um, I was super suicidal and depressed. And um, when I transitioned, it was like night and day, like a, a whole new person and a whole new, like, it sounds cliche, but like a new lease on life for sure. Yeah, I and seen, just, I seen. Oh, go ahead. That? I was just I seen, through, like, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, go on. Go on. No, go ahead. It's okay. Yeah, no, I, I seen a video. You, you, you touched on your mother there, and I seen a video that the Daily Mail put out years ago about how supportive that she was through the journey. So that must have been a massive bonus for you. Yeah, she is. She is really great. Um, when it comes to my transition, she's always been super supportive. Um, and it's very rare <laughs> even with like my porn career and everything like she's been always by my side and I, I love her so much like she's like a sister to me yeah um before before the porn career anyway you touched on that you got into modeling how did you decide or how did you decide to go into I suppose that line of work and is that something you kind of always wanted to do um <laughs> Yeah, I like really, as since I was a kid, I always wanted to do like modeling and I don't know why, it's just always been like a burning passion within me. Um, I don't know if it's like just from like being neglected and like wanting attention <laughs> all the time or something. Um, but when i was 16 i got signed with a management company and they kind of like saw something within me and it was kind of when um this was when like caitlin jenner had just came out um they were putting people like i am jazz on tv and doing like reality shows and um the agency wanted to use me for like modeling and then acting and stuff like that and I remember on the first day, they literally sat me down and I was like 16. So I was like underage, but they told me, yeah, if you do porn, you're, we're never going to be able to get you mainstream or do anything like that. Like your career is going to be dead. And it's like, why are you telling me this as like a 16 year old? But then I look back at it and it's like, okay, like, especially with pretty trans girls, like, it's so easy to make bank <laughs> doing that and that it's like, yeah. but um, yeah, so I did modeling for them for a little bit, like a really short period. Um, and I just always had a passion for it. So yeah. doing like porn and stuff is like a great outlet for that for me. <laughs> yeah. It's the How same as just naked. <laughs> <laughs> How did the transition from 
modeling to porn came about and it was was it something that you thought about for a while or were you anyway reluctant to get into that industry um <laughs> so i had been getting like offers because you had mentioned the video that i did with the daily mail once yeah. that had come out and I, I was still a teenager um i was <laughs> literally getting offers from like producers that like i now know today <laughs> um but so I always knew that it was kind of like an option for me. Um, the door was always open. So it was something that I thought about for a while. Um, and then of course, like I always, um, I don't know, I just like, I waited a bit because I wanted to like work on my body, um, like perfecting it, you know, yeah. so it can like get on camera and be camera ready. So once i felt like super comfortable and confident that's when i was like okay and then i had always i had been doing only fans for like about a year and webcamming since i was 18 so that on top of it it was like okay this can really just take my whole career to the next level and um i'm so glad that i did it because <laughs> it really yeah. has yeah um when it when it comes to porn then and making we'll say content for porn what is your preference like men women top and bottom uh, like, what is what is your preference what is my preference i love well first of all i love men i love dick <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um i love being the, on the bottom position i love getting fucked um but if I am going to do the fucking, I'd rather it be like a chick for sure. <laughs> um, but I have topped guys in the past. Um, so, I mean, I'm pretty, pretty open minded. Um, but when it comes to like what I really, really like, it's just I'm so submissive. So, <laughs> definitely someone that can like take control and just like, I lose all everything and i love that <laughs> yeah, um, yeah but it's kind of funny i've like explored so much of my sexuality like on camera because <laughs> it's like the first time i've ever had sex with a girl was on camera the first time i ever had like a threesome or anything like that it's all on camera <laughs> um so i'm kind of thankful for porn for like ex like exposing that to myself so I can learn more about like what I do really like. Learning on the job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I've got a few funny ones for you. Like, well, maybe funny, that might not be funny, but is there anything that you have ever been offered in porn that you said, no, nope, I'm not doing it? <laughs> is there anything ever been offered in porn that I said I'm not doing? Um, well, yeah, for like producers that are really fucking cheap and don't want to pay my weight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> but um, I don't really have like a lot of things that I won't do, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty adventurous. <laughs> Here, here's another funny question that I like asking people from the adult movie world. Um, you're out and about you're going to the shop, you're going to the grocery store. Have you ever been out in public and someone has recognized you that you don't know from movies? Have you any funny stories like that? Um, well, I get all the time, oh, you look so familiar. Where do I know you from? And it's like, um, I don't know. I think a lot of the time, especially being trans, maybe if it wouldn't, it wouldn't be like, so like where are you from and like bitch you know where i'm from <laughs> like um like they don't want to like admit <laughs> almost but yeah. they'd rather i say it but um yeah it's like rarely happen where they like come up to me though like i don't know i'm i'm still kind of new so i don't think um I don't know. I'll, I'll, hopefully I'll get that way. <laughs> but um, I've had like maybe one or two instances like that. But I mean, it's yeah. a rarity. Yeah. I'm going to show you a clip now from your YouTube channel. And we're going to discuss <laughs> this clip. Yeah, we're going to discuss this clip afterwards. I haven't told you about this, but uh, I think you'll enjoy this.
<laughs> oh no. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Oh, uh, no, I'm good on the Gates Scott cookies. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just the acting is so good. Oh, uh, yeah, Absolutely. Okay, uh, money up the streets. I'm trying to get some. You should check her out. Yeah. She sure is persistent. She did have some nice tits, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give him a really good deal. What if I come in your ass? Is that cool? I don't know. <laughs> now, my my point where I was going with that one is how important is or is it important at all storytelling in your opinion in porn? Um, for me, I, I think it's more fun because as a performer, it's, it's nice to be able to like get into character because whether the viewer wants to believe it or not, we are acting, um, <laughs> we're adult actors. Like we go home after we fuck and we like have our own lives. We're not like fucking and just like get off and like, um, no, we're doing it for money. So for me, I really like being able to have like a full on like character that I can like engulf into or like, yeah. I don't know. It's just more fun. I love doing like um, costumes. So like cosplay or like role playing or anything like that. It's like so fun for me. <laughs> um, so porn without that. And I've done porn like that. <clears throat> and it's um, more like Gonzo. It's yeah. it still can be just as hot and like enjoyable for sure. But um, as a performer, <laughs> um, it's definitely like more fun to have character and lines and costumes, all that stuff. You can really get into the scene. I think. Yeah, uh, we touched on it before. Your OnlyFans page and how long has it been going now? How long has it been going for? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I think I'm on my second year. Um, so I did it for a year just doing solid OnlyFans and webcamming. And then I got into porn and been doing that for about a year now. So it's been going so good though, um, especially this past couple months all my features are coming out and everything so it's been blowing up it's been awesome yeah and do you find a lot of your fans now are checking out obviously your work in the the adult movie world then as well uh definitely <laughs> um yeah i think a lot of people well i don't know my og fans that knew me from like e old YouTube or like when I did the Daily Meal and my modeling days, um, they definitely, some of them were taken back, but I feel like the majority of my fan base, even from when I was a kid, was like the same demographic that I have now. So yeah. um, they're enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, for people that are watching this that are not subscribed, why should they subscribe and what kind of content do you offer there? They should subscribe because I offer so much different content. Um, I offer full length orgies to solo videos to solo one on one sex scene. Um, you can, the only way you can ever like get in direct contact with me is through um, my OnlyFans, BrittanyK.com. So that alone should be like big incentive. <laughs> yeah, and I will definitely put the links to the OnlyFans underneath it. Is there any projects outside of porn that you like working on or are working on at the moment? Um, yeah, I do music. Um, so that's something that I like to do um, in my free time. Also traveling, so doing more of that. I'm actually going 
I'm thinking about um, talking with like producers and stuff about doing a shoot out in Montreal, Canada. So that's going to be fun. I love traveling the world. Um, and um, that porn modeling, <laughs> um, that's about my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you as active on YouTube now? Or are you putting much content out there at the moment? I would love to be more active on YouTube. I did film a YouTube video recently, so that will be coming out. Um, yeah, I. it's kind of therapeutic in a way because I've done it since I was like literally a teenager, like a kid, and it's like, it's so familiar to me. And um, I feel like I do have a connection with my audience on there that I don't have on other platforms so that part's really cool but yeah they yeah, can definitely YouTube, subscribe to that too <laughs> yeah because your youtube is really big i think there's over twenty one thousand people there yeah uh-huh. so it's a, it's a good one to uh to keep going as well Brittany, exactly. if people want to <laughs> if people want to follow you on social media do you have the links there or will i just pop them underneath this video um if you want to find me on social media you can put the links down in the bio but yeah. everything for the most part is Brittany Cade XO on Instagram Twitter beat all Brittany BrittanyCade.com for my website and that's about it those are my main things I'm on at least so yeah yeah Brittany, it was a pleasure to talk to you today, and I wish you all the best in the future. Absolutely. Thank you so, so much for having me. This was awesome. No problem.